Thank you very much, Lori. And then, Sandy, you're going to talk about how Kansas State University is engaged at Fort Riley. I'm going to talk about Kansas State University College of Education, education and how we are engaged with the schools in the Fort Riley area. And we do have an amazing engagement program with the installation and the university. And that program actually belongs in, under the Military Affairs Director, Art DeGroat, who is here somewhere, um, and I can link you up with them. But I'm going, to, I'm going to focus on the education and training teachers to work with military children, because that's really where my passion is right now. I am a military spouse of 26 years and I have uh, we have two boys 23 and 19 years old and we've lived the life that I am now having the great opportunity to train other teachers um, in our community about and actually across the state of Kansas our boys went to seven different schools so uh, MSEC will tell you that's in the average range <laughs> but of those seven schools, five of them were in five different states just during middle school and high school alone. And dad was deployed for three of those um, years, of those five years, of those uh, seven years in middle school and high school. So a lot of movement, especially as older students. Um, do you know that there are military children, connected children, in every school district in the United States? Does that surprise anybody? Yeah. I see some nods. It's true. Ask MSEC. Um, I'll tell you, they have the research. What you may be more familiar with is that military connected individuals face a particular set of challenges, and we've, we've shared a lot of those um, over the course of the last couple of days in these forums, and circumstances that civilian students do not. And at the Kansas State University College of Education, what we're doing is working to lessen those effects of the issues in a number of ways. Because we're one of the largest, um, we are the largest of the 23 teacher education programs in the state of Kansas, and with our close ties to Fort Riley, hey Fort Riley, I know you're watching, <laughs> Fort Leavenworth, and the fact that the vast majority of our pre-service teachers complete their clinical training in military connected school districts all around the area, we knew that we could make a difference. So what we did is we became one of the first 100 universities to join Operation Educate the Educators. That is a nationwide joining forces initiative that was given guiding principles set forth by the American Association of Colleges for Teacher Education and the Military Child Education Coalition, commonly referred to as MSEC. And this program is designed to help better prepare both pre-service and in-service school personnel to meet the needs of military-connected children. So the dean got smart. <laughs> I think she's watching. <laughs> and she hired me to spearhead this program uh, are in, in the College of Ed, um, Operation Educate the Educators. And like any good teacher, she gave me four objectives to get started. She said, I want you to identify the most critical concepts future teachers should know about teaching military connected children. I want to, to then make suggestions of where these concepts can be taught across our teacher education curriculum. I want you to plan professional development sessions for our faculty and for our students. And I want you to identify and or develop resources for faculty and student development. Oh, and can you start working on a documentary? <laughs> That was just a start, and that was a year and a half ago. And with that began our military ed ops uh, program. And one of the first things we did as a faculty is we conducted a book study. The nice thing about Operation Educate the Educators is that the universities who have signed on to this program have agreed to share and share alike. Um, sometimes unheard of in the academic world of, I wrote that, I own that, it's mine, you pay for it or you don't use it. What we're doing, and this is uh, this book, I, and it's tiny and you probably can't see it for most of you, but it, it is called The Teacher's Guide for Supporting Students from Military Families. It was written by Dr. Ron Astor and a team of people out of the University of Southern California, and they are doing some great work and they're sharing it. Right now, Teachers College Press is actually sending these books out for free on request to military families and educators of military children. Um, they don't just have one for teachers, they have one for parents, for school personnel, and for administrators. We also uh, are using some of the materials out of Old Dominion University. Uh, also, they're sharing. And so what we've done is we've shared, we're sharing our stuff as well. 
after we did our book study, I, I issued orders. I took a, a set of our own orders that's bringing us to Fort Riley, Kansas, and I modified them a little bit, and I passed them out to the teachers, um, the faculty in the university, and wanted them to kind of go through the day in the life of the military family. And we all know basic needs need to be met. When a family comes to a new installation, they have to figure out where to eat, where to live, where to go to school, and where to play. If they have kids, that's all, you know, priority. So I issued those orders, and we started with lunch in the dining facility, which was a neat experience for the faculty members um, to have out there um, from the university. They had lived, some of them told me they had lived there for decades and driven up and down the highway, passing Fort Riley, had never been through the gates. Then we took them out to our housing. Um, our on post, we have Cor Corvius Housing, fabulous um, housing program in the community and they took us on a tour of model home. They were very gracious and through the community centers and we went to one of our elementary schools on post where our faculty members, even though it was a school that was run and taught by a principal who had come through our own PhD program and it was one of our professional development schools, our faculty had no idea that they had a 50 percent turnover rate in students every single school year during the school year. I'm not talking about the summer turnover. And that really opened some eyes. Um, then took them over to the teen center and, and uh, the garrison and the teen, uh, CYSS people were able to share some insights to the installation and the family programs that were available. And they got all sorts of ideas of how we could get our college students, our pre-service teachers engaged the military families out there on Fort Riley and volunteering and working with the military kids. Um, it, w w you know, it, it was funny to me to kind of watch from a different set of eyes what was so normal to me. We've always lived on an installation and, and my, my 14 moves. We've always lived on post and it was, you know, but to them it was fascinating and eye-opening. So that was neat. And I started building a digital resource portfolio for our faculty, for our students um, to use. And in then I started working on the workshops because they said, well, how can you get this into the classrooms? And I put together um, some workshops that we're going to share with you also. It'll be up on our website. And I have I've put bookmarks out. There's some, some of them um, on the, some of the tables. There's more on the table over there. And it has a link to our site where we're going to have all our materials. And you will be able to access the workshops on social emotional development of the students and how that how you can, as teachers, build, help build resiliency in the schools, in your classrooms, and how that um, corresponds with the deployment cycle. And I will say that I am proud to say after nine months that documentary was completed. We premiered it on September 11th to 400 students, faculty, military, and community members. And I'd like to share with you just a couple minutes of that program. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be someone else? To actually see the world through their eyes? That is why we created the documentary series, A Walk in My Shoes. And now we present our latest installment, Military Life. Because great teaching starts with good listening, we went straight to subject matter experts. Military members and their families at Fort Riley and Fort Leavenworth and ask what they wish teachers knew about their lives. Stories highlight the dedication, the bonds, the service, and the challenges our military and their families face. It is our hope that by sharing their experiences, we can provide invaluable insights for our pre-service teachers, learn from each other, and recognize the good that each student brings to our campus, and, in a way, walk in someone else's shoes. That sense of serving something greater and being a part of something large that everybody has an equal share in, that camaraderie and that friendship is something that you just can't really describe or put words to, but a military person kind of understands it. And that's why you form such a strong bond with your brothers in arms. You have to get through it together and uh, you work for that one common goal, you know, just getting home alive. This is all I've ever known was the military life. 
very patriotic family. We believe in our country and giving back. Growing up as a military kid, I'm glad that I'll have that background. That way, I'll be able to relate to the students and know exactly how they feel because I know a lot of times you're looking at a teacher and you say, well, you don't understand. One of the things that I want my children's teachers to know is that we do have a very unique lifestyle. It's not bad, it's just different. Um, very different, and unless you've been a part of it, it's hard to understand some of those challenges. I think the best part of military life for me as a spouse and a parent has been the opportunity for constant growing and changing myself. I was very surprised to find out the number of our students who are impacted by the military. I didn't understand the sacrifices that those children make along with mom and dad and their siblings and their entire family. One thing I wish that some teachers would be is, is maybe a little more empathetic. When you're in the United States, it's not as easy to understand the difficulties of a parent being deployed. So that was just a little trailer of the, of the documentary. And we believe that by creating and sharing this film uh, with educators everywhere, because it, it, um, th that it will have, um, it, it's going to shape the change, the, you know, shape the, education world as far as working with our military kids everywhere since they are everywhere in the world and that is available you'll be able to access the full video through um, our website that's listed on the bookmark so please take that back and share that with your schools and um, your teachers your own kids teachers it's already being used in multiple states I've um, heard from superintendents and professional development directors it's kind of exciting did you catch the book that the soldiers were reading in the classroom little champs book is um, United through reading ladies still here are they, are they with us I know they were here earlier this is a, a great book it's a story of five military kids all different branches it's the it's the most joint installation there is <laughs> but <laughs> each one of them are going through a, a different um, yet typical challenge of the military student and in it, it addresses not only the military lifestyle but also the po um, positive character traits that help build resiliency in um, kids and not just military kids all kids and I wanted to um, I've been working on some activities and, and the next week we're taking this to the far western Kansas um, up near the Nebraska border doing a three-hour activity uh, program with the entire elementary school. I have a team of six, six individuals, graduate students um, and some uh, other professors coming with me to uh, try that out so that, sh that should be interesting. Um, we also collaborate with the Institute for the Health and Security of Military Families which is stood up in our College of Human Ecology um, and with the Kansas Operation Military Kids um, through our K-State Extension Office to help deliver programs like um, the Little Champs. And uh, Jerry and I like to call that synergistic integration. No commercial washers? Okay. <laughs> Thought I'd get a lap. Okay, then bazinga. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I got some big bang fans. Um, the College of Ed, we have 23,000 students, or, or teachers out there, graduates, in 50 states, in 48 countries. It's just the beginning of our expanding, expanding footprint. We um, are currently conducting research about how to best teach the military child, and not just, we're not just focused on the military kids. To the two young men you heard, not so young, one's a retired command star major <laughs> in the trailer, were students of mine who are becoming teachers with the 9-11 GI Bill. We have so many veterans and, in our school and we're really working on how to um, help our faculty work best and you heard Colonel Sutherland talk about that. Um, you know, it, it's hard when they're sitting next to the 18-year-old with the draggy pants, so <laughs> it's, it's different. And, uh, so we're working to, to improve their uh, education experience as well. So our mission is to prepare educators to be knowledgeable, ethical, caring decision makers for a diverse and changing world. And just like the, the big red one down the street, we want them to be brave, ready, and on-point teachers. Thank you. <laughs>